some lessons on the web the channel dedicated to teaching piano music to people all around the world and i have another great lesson for you today uh it's about quarter note triplets so uh let's get started before we talked about eighth note triplets uh if you don't know what i'm talking about i do have some uh uh, it's like a rhythm lesson series, so if you go to my playlist and check that out, you can find them there. Uh, and they go through uh, these uh, triplets and things like that. And then also on my website, once the video is finished, don't click off of it just yet, uh, you can go to LessonsOnTheWeb.com. And part of my Lessons on the Web Academy, I have actually a lot more uh, you know, practices, like videos and things to practice uh, to help you learn the most about rhythm, but we're going to do a, an introductory lesson today into quarter note triplets. So I'm going to go over eighth note triplets real quick, and there's a reason I drew all of this this way, and that's because the top staff, just ignore that they're treble and clef and bass clef for a minute. I just wrote them strictly as rhythms, so I wrote them on the bottom line. Uh, so we have two eighth note triplets, right? One triplet, two triplet. That's how we count those, you know, each of those syllables goes along with uh, the number, and I have a quarter note triplet written on the bottom, and I wrote them all in the same staff, or all in the same measure, those, are those little boxes here and here, and I did that on purpose because the top, the amount of beats that the top line takes up is the exact amount of beats the bottom line's going to take up, which is how many beats, you know, ask yourself how many beats are in that measure, well you can look at the time signature, it does tell you 2-4, right, so there's two beats in a measure, so we have beat one here. Oh, let me just flip it back to this. So you have here one triplet and then two. Draw the two a little bit better. That was even worse. Two triplet. One triplet, two triplet. So let me play it on the piano. One, yeah. One triplet, two triplet, one triplet, two triplet. Let me count them real slow. One triplet, two triplet. Now, as kind of as a quarter notes, I would go one, two, because I have to fit three of these eighth note triplets into one beat. One triplet, two triplet, one triplet, two triplet. Now, here's how to count quarter note triplets. It's not quite as easy as just saying one triplet, two triplet. Because uh, it takes up the amount of two beats, so it doesn't really fall exactly, like it doesn't divide one beat up into exactly the same amount, if that makes any sense. So this is how it's done, right? And the reason I drew one on top of the other, as you'll see in a second. So with a quarter note triplet, right, I'm going to box these out to show where they, they actually line up together. So on beat one of the quarter note triplet and the beat one of the eighth note triplet, those hit at the exact same time. So obviously beat one, you're going to have that downbeat when you play. Now, let's see. Here is our second note, right? Now, which one does that line up with? Well, as I showed you, it lines with plet, which is, like I said, it's kind of confusing because it doesn't line up exactly uh, with the eighth note triplets. But so far we have one triplet. And so far I'm only playing the quarter note triplets on the piano. One triplet. And that's all we have so far. One triplet. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Uh, we have the first quarter note triplet on beat one, and then we have the second one on plet of beat one, the, the last third of beat one, I guess I could say. Now this next one doesn't hit with two, so careful of that, because if you play it with two, it will be incorrect. It instead lines up with what? Tri, right? So now instead of one triplet, two triplet, I have one triplet, two triplet, one triplet, two triplet, one triplet, two triplet. While I'm counting all that, I'm really only playing one, two, three because that's our eighth note triplet. So that's how you count those, is you can kind of imagine, instead of one set of quarter note triplets, imagine two set of eighth note triplets, but you're only playing on one triplet, two triplet. So you're only playing on one tri, or sorry, one plet tri. It's kind of weird. And like I said, it's not nearly as easy as the eighth note triplets, I don't think. But if you line them up that way, you will be able to play them. 
So going from quarter notes, right? Uh, let's just say we're, we're in 2 4, which we are. You would go 1, 2, 1, 2. So those are the quarter notes, right? That means that the triplet, eighth note triplets, have to be three times as fast. 1 triplet, 2 triplet, 1 triplet, 2 triplet. Now, if you're counting those two beats, to count the quarter note triplet, you would play on 1 triplet, 2 triplet, 1 triplet. Two triplet, one triplet, two triplet. And what I really recommend doing is, uh, you know, mapping this out. You know, you can take a screenshot of it if you have that snippet tool. That's always very useful. And uh, really, just counting the eighth note triplets at first, one triplet, two triplet, and playing with the eighth note triplets, and then try. You're gonna try. Have to do it very slow because when I first did this, I had to do it very slow to be able to get it. You wanna go one triplet two triplet and then just make sure that you're playing on the correct one the one the plet and the tri which is kind of a strange way to put it uh and then practice that over and over again so i'm going to do it like five times and what i recommend you do is you go through this part of the video five times with me and you might even want to go back you know more than that and count along with me until you really get the feeling for it and the key is playing the piano at the correct time you also want to count out loud. It's not the most fun thing to do, and it might be a little nerve-wracking at first to kind of wrap your brain around all this, but it takes a lot of practice. So again, you know, my website and the other videos on the channel can help with that, but for right now, we're going to stick with it. So here, I'm going to do it five times right in a row. So here we go. We have one triplet, two triplet. We do a little slower, actually. One triplet, two triplet, one triplet two triplet one triplet two triplet one triplet two triplet one triplet two triplet just like that and then once you get better you can go one triplet two triplet one triplet two triplet Again, if I take away the one triplet, two triplet, I really have a very steady sounding triplet, you know, even though when I'm counting it, it seems like it's offset since they line up with, you know, different syllables and things like that. So just go through that part of the video, like I said, and practice saying it over and over again until you get the feel for one triplet, two triplet, and then eventually you'll be able to play... You know the uh, quarter note triplets kind of on their own uh, in the beat so that's a little bit tougher so I would always break them down into two eighth note triplets and then do it that way so here's what I mean so say we have uh, we're gonna go back into 4-4 four, four. oops be gone bar line so while I'm getting this set up you know if you feel like you're learning from this video why not give it a thumbs up? It really helps me out as well as lets other know others know that this is a you know a quality video that they can learn from as well because it's all about helping the world learn piano as I say uh, quite often. But that really is what it's all about. So we have here we go. We're gonna go. So say you have like four quarter notes. You have four four right. So we're gonna have four quarter notes again. Back to our normal. You know standard thing that we're used to so one two three four and then say instead of that like um no actually let me leave that this four quarter notes there and then say the next measure you have two quarter notes and then a quarter note triplet how many notes does a quarter note triplet take up it always takes up at least in anything that ends in four it is going to take up two of the beats. We're, we're going to do quarter note triplets, and well, triplets really just fit into 6 8 anyway, but we'll do quarter note triplets for uh, that's really qu quarter notes though in 6 8. I was going to say we're going to do it for 6 8, but that's a little bit different. But not let me, don't let me get too far ahead of myself here. But anyway, we have beat one, two, three, four, and then one, two, and then how am I going to count this? I would count it as below it I would write let me let me just copy the thing so far 
and then I would do this. So hold on a second. Oops. Here we go. And I then I would write two eighth note triplets. I actually need to get rid of that. Boom. Oh. And then you have to write the three, and then it lines up just perfect. So I wrote the alternate down below here. One, two, and then remember that we're going to line this up. Line this up. And line this up. So it's going to be counted as one, two, one triplet, two triplet. So that's how you're going to play your, you know, quarter or quarter triplet, quarter note triplets. One, two, one triplet, two triplet. Now it's not very practical to write this out. Like if you have a sheet of music that you need to read this from, like a jazz sheet or something, you're not going to be able to write the eighth note triplets below it because chances are you'll have a, another section of music below that. So it's not entirely practical. So what I would do instead is say, let me just copy this over here. Um, copy, and then you paste it. Okay, just say say I had this, and I'm like, all right, how do I count this right off the bat? Well, one, two, one triplet, two triplet. I still did it, so that's why it's important to you know go over that part of the video again, or any parts of this video, or by yourself, practice playing the eighth note triplets versus the quarter note triplets and line them up with one, right? You're gonna hit it on beat one. When's the next one come in? With the, I'm talking about the quarter note triplet, by the way. It comes on plet, right? So you're gonna go one, tri, and the next one's on plet, and then you have two. You're not gonna play one again, and then tri, plet again. So you're gonna go one, tri, plet, two, tri, plet. And then eventually you get really good at it, so you don't need to write out the eighth note triplets. You, you can count this rhythm as one, two, one, tri, plet, two, tri, plet, or I guess I really should have gone one, two, three, triplet, four, triplet, since we have four beats in each measure. So let me just, you know, mark this out with the pen, and we'll be good to go. Oh, wait, this is really beat three, so you say three, triplet, and then four. Oh wait, no, you'd have four here, and then tri, plet. So that's where they would line up. So I, I suggest when you count them, still count them as eighth note triplets, but then play them on the correct things like we talked about. So again, it takes a long time to rattle your head around this. Uh, some of you may get it right away. You might be a rhythm master or something um, of that nature. So. Uh, that concludes the lesson. Uh, we really just did how to count quarter note triplets today, and we just basically went along. We talked about how to break the notes up into three parts for the eighth note triplets, and then where in the eighth note triplets when counting those that the quarter note triplets line up. So if you want a lot of extra practice on this, I really highly suggest you head over to my website, lessonsontheweb.com. Once the video is over, and check out my online academy uh, where you can learn a lot more and get a lot more practice with this rhythm stuff. But not only that, a lot of other courses as well. And if again, if you thought this was a quality video and you learned something from this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, you know, it lets others know that this is a great lesson as well. So this has been Tim from uh, Lessons on the Web. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And I will talk to you for the next one. And remember to subscribe because more and more great videos are on the way. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody in the stream. Now I'm going to take uh, comments and questions to see what we got. Oh, or use a metronome on eight beats a bar. Oh, and you were wrong, as I was trying to figure out what you meant by that. Uh, how would you do that? Well, that would be like having eighth notes, right? 
uh, that'd be tricky because it would be one and two because you'd that wouldn't line up quite as well uh, for the so I would do it with the eighth note triplets instead. So everybody, if you're just joining us, you missed the main part of the lesson. Of course, there will be the, you'll be able to watch the main clip, like the whole um, live stream. That's what it's called, is live stream class uh, from beginning to end. So I'm really just taking class uh, questions right now. That's the word about uh, really what we just talked about, which is quarter note triplets. So keep a lookout for the um, recording when it's posted, and then you can catch up on the whole thing. Although I think with YouTube, you can look back and uh, watch the whole thing in case you've just uh, jumped into the stream. And again, I want to mention before I take more questions that we stream uh, every Friday, almost every Friday and almost every Sunday. I do take w one off every now and again um, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you look and convert the time and all that. And then uh, pretty soon I'm going to make like a newsletter to where I will email people, you know, when we will be, uh, you know, doing the live stream. So you get like that really good update. YouTube is okay on that. Like you can subscribe and, you know, maybe you'll get the, uh, the update, but YouTube sometimes is a little bit iffy, but if you check around here, lesson, no, youtube.com slash lessons on the web slash user, no, 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 slash user slash lessons on the web slash live, uh, at the, you know, 8 p.m. around these times, uh, we should be here, and I would love it if you uh, could come out again. So if anybody is new here, or anybody has any uh, questions or comments, you know, feel free to leave them. I love to uh, hear from you. And uh, if not, like if you want to communicate with me, a great way to communicate with me is either through the comments on these videos or through Facebook. Facebook is actually really good. Uh, so facebook.com slash lessons on the web. And, uh, you know, just like the page and then you can message me and I'll get back to you pretty soon. I try to be really good with that because I know a lot of people are depend, not dependent, but, uh, you know, are looking forward to uh, my answers. So I try to give those as best I can. So that's a great way to communicate with me as well as also get updates on what is coming out. So any comments or questions about the lesson? Or anything you want me to uh, go over again? Was there any part of it that like was confusing to you? Or do you have any questions about like maybe just lessons on the web in general? Uh, you know, whether it's about me. Well, let's not get too personal into me. But if there's something musical about me uh, that you want to know, I will uh, be more than willing to tell you. But yeah, just any general questions about anything, I will take those um, now. <laughs> That's okay, Shusk. Um, that's all right. You know, when I attended class for a long time, I never like commented or anything and I never got into, uh, you know, really speaking up in class until I started, you know, hosting my own classes and, uh, teaching. And then I, and then being involved online really helped me with that, but that's okay if people don't want to, uh, say hello, but I don't bite. That is true. That is true. I do not uh, do that. So if you are, uh, you know, if you're not quite as familiar with me, uh, you know, I'm Tim, uh, Tim Worm is my name, and uh, I have a music degree from Westchester University, and uh, I love hosting these live streams. It's like a free music class. It's really great, and I think it's a great thing uh, for the community. What about you, Shesk? Do you have any questions? So anybody just checking in, I'm taking questions now. Um, if I don't have too many, we will call it a day. And then, uh, actually, I want to know what uh, kind of topics do you want me to cover in the future live streams? I would love to know. Uh, if there's like a really topic you want a class about, then I can make a class about it. Uh, and we can meet together and talk it over. Yeah, it really does, Shusk. It really does take a lot of time to master. We've talked about in some of the previous live streams on how to tackle that. Uh, I really recommend going, you know, if anybody's watching for the first time, I'm sure you know about it already, but music theory, yeah, music theory.net and go to their note trainer, I think it's called and practice those every day practice. You know, if you're just struggling with the bass clef, practice the bass clef just with the treble clef 
just the treble clef and then off the, it, like within the treble clef and bass clef and then also outside of those clefs as well and then just practicing you know just read something uh some sort of new piece of music on a regular basis so whether that's once a week or once a, a day i try to read something new every day uh, in terms of reading music uh, because that makes you really good at it so if you're trying to get good at and fluent at a language well what should you do you should speak it and you know read it every day and you'll get really really good it does take a lot of time though and like we talked about earlier in the lesson uh you know not all of us have infinite time in the world i uh, have the luxury of practicing quite a bit because i'm making all these videos all the time all these courses and um also i also teach uh locally quite a lot So remember, if you caught us at the end of uh, the lesson here, remember to give it a thumbs up. Uh, it really helps me out, but it also lets others know that uh, they can learn from this video as well. So it's very helpful to everybody. Because like I said, the whole goal of this whole thing and really why I do it, I mean, I do do it as a business. You know, I'll be honest that I do need to make a living. But, uh, you know, I really was driven towards this as a passion to, uh, teach people, you know, all around the world. That's why I started the YouTube channel to really offer, uh, lessons to those who, you know, really couldn't, uh, attain, obtain them. Uh, either they don't live in a place where they can get lessons or they can't afford regular lessons and they just need some advice and some, uh, possibly some inspiration. So that's what it's all about. So I, I always love, uh, you know, getting more people involved. Uh, even in these live streams, it's uh, really great. Yeah, Shesk, I, I am mostly classical trained myself. Uh, in music school, we played a lot of classical, Bach, Mozart, um, Beethoven, Chopin. Well, Chopin's... Uh, a lot of people think any music that's old is classical, but Chopin uh, and even later Beethoven is more uh, romantic. Uh, and then, you know, Debussy uh, is like in the Impressionism, then you get New Expressionism and things like that with Ravel. Um, so it's not all technically not all classical, but I certainly understand why people say, you know, any kind of music that's over 100 years old is classical. Um, I get that, but if you're going by like strict terms, classical is like a really uh, defined point in history. Uh, let's look that up. Oops. So what we're doing right now is we're looking up the classical period it's from 1775 to 1825 so it's a specific time period anybody that was around at that time so it looks like haydn yeah mozart yep uh beethoven and then actually i was i made a mistake because i said bach and a lot of people do think uh bach is uh classical but he was from the baroque era but he really helped pave the way for a lot of these classical guys uh, in case you're really into that kind of stuff Yeah, I will do um, more classical, like maybe I should do like an introduction into classical music where I elaborate more on what classical is and, and what the styles are. I do have a course on that. You know, I always like to point back to my courses that I've made um, since they're already there and they, they are a lot more comprehensive than some of the stuff I give here since, you know, you practice, uh, you know, with assignments and things like that. Um, but if you're here right now, I think, uh, I might do like a little, maybe some to try something different, maybe like an introduction into, you know, what the classical period was all about and some of the classical composers. I think that would probably be a nice change, uh, from the usual lessons, but the usual lessons will still, still, uh, come out. So don't worry. I'm surprised. I want to do. I give a shout out to 
other people that have been in the stream before who uh, are not in attendance. So if you're a regular, I will do this just to mainly tease you and uh, <laughs> ask why you're not here. Why aren't you here? Uh, Rich is not here tonight. Rich is always uh, here. Manny hasn't been here twice in a row. Manny might be sick or doing something uh, this weekend. I totally understand. Uh, his age, you know, I think he's 17. Uh, I was doing, you know, tons of other things on Friday and Sunday nights, but, you know, mainly getting ready for school on Sunday night anyway. Um, uh, Mandy was here for a while. Mandy, if you're watching this, I do remember uh, when you were here. Uh, Shesk is here. He wasn't here yet last time, and uh, but that's okay. Uh, and then who else? I'm just trying to think of who else. I know there are other people, but they're not quite as regular. So you only get a shout out if you are a regular. Um, and I know you will. So feel free to say hello if you're watching in the background. If you know if you don't feel like it, it's totally fine. Uh, I completely understand. I'm just glad you're here uh, learning from us. And remember to watch out for the clip coming very soon, probably as soon as this is done. You know, YouTube, like, processes it, and then they post it, and then I clip it, like, a little bit. And then what I do is I make a video later that's, like, a condensed version that uh, takes out all the fluffy parts uh, and makes, like, a one cohesive lesson out of it. So look forward to those. All right, I'm going to give it like three minutes if I don't get a, a lot of response, which is totally fine. You know, I know it is a Sunday night and, uh, you know, the main part of the lesson is over already. Uh, we will call it a night, uh, but we usually do like, you know, maybe an hour. But I think, uh, you know, we, we will cut it a little short because I always want to go as long as I can answer most of the questions I get. Sometimes I get too many questions, which is fine. I love it. Uh, but then I have to end it anyway. But uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, we got a responder. Uh, Yogo, go, go, try Yogo, go, go. I don't know if I said all that right. Um, but your dad wants to learn piano. That is terrific. So if you want to send him over the channel, if he doesn't know already, or if you want him to talk to me, um, you know, like I said, Facebook is a good way to do it. Uh, lesson, no, facebook.com slash lessons on the web. Or email Tim at LessonsOnTheWeb.com. Uh, so if he's interested in learning, you know, just send him my way or just send him to my videos. So it would be uh, really awesome. Or if you have any questions about him him learning the piano or you learning the piano, uh, let me know. Okay, how can I get him to learn with YouTube? So I have a what i really recommend so i assume you have a keyboard or something to learn on uh at the house and what you want to do is you want to uh go actually you know what i may do well let me do this first so if you go to the main channel page which a lot of people i mean kind of know about uh, you go to the main channel page, and what you do is you go, which is youtube.com, by the way, slash user, slash lessons on the web. I'll type it into the chat here in a second. And then what you want to do is you want to go uh, to this top bar here, right under where it says lessons on the web, and you want to click on playlists. And I really suggest you uh, show your dad the learn to play piano series I made. And this will walk him through like the very basic steps all the way through like playing basic songs, playing chords, playing scales. Anything he needs to get started as a beginner is really here for him uh, in this course. And I really recommend if he starts from the, the beginning of this playlist and works his way toward the later lessons, he will learn uh, quite a lot. Um, so let me type that in. So there I've typed it into the chat. You know, you want to 
go to uh, that link and then click on playlists. And yes, uh, well, at one time I would consider myself a concert pianist. Uh, I went to Westchester University. I did play in a lot of recitals there. I have played for groups before and uh, like um, old folks' homes and things like that. But I was really like, and I still am today, but I'm more of a teacher today. Um, so I haven't really played in a concert hall in a while because I teach really all day. I teach like 90% of the day, whether it's, you know, driving to somebody's house to teach them, teaching somebody over Skype or, uh, you know, making one of these videos or, you know, doing one of these live streams. So I'm teaching all the time, but at one time, uh, so, so basically to answer your question, yes, I am a professionally trained musician. And at one time I was a concert pianist. Uh, you know, I did play in concert halls, but not recently, not in the last few years, only because I've been teaching so much. So I'm a lot better of a teacher now uh, than I was years ago, but I still do know how to play uh, quite a bit. But I don't have like uh, a concert's worth of material ready anymore to play, um, which I kind of wish I did. But at the same time, like I said, I love teaching so much. So uh, that's fine with me, and then maybe I'll, I'll become one again someday. But I am a professionally trained musician, and I do have a music degree uh, from Westchester University School of Music. Maple Leaf Rag, that's pretty difficult. So if you were able to play that, that's pretty impressive. And the Nocturne number 2, is that by Chopin? Um, is that... I haven't played it in a long time, but is that the one in E-flat? I wish I remembered that. I had that ready for a concert, too, a few years ago. Uh, that one is really nice. Yeah, I love that song too. It's one of my favorites. Um, and if I ever get a chance, I will. I'm sure I will at some point. I will uh, relearn it. Um, I would like to practice it first before I get the sheet music out and play it for you. I, I definitely don't have it memorized anymore. Uh, but I did uh, have it for a while. That's one of my favorites as well. Maple Leaf Rag. Maple Leaf Rag is the... Um, I don't know. That's like a really bad, uh, I'm really bad at mimicking piano sounds. Uh, let me see. I'm going to play like 10 seconds of it because if I play 10 seconds of it, I, th I don't think I will get in trouble. Okay, so I'll end it there. I mean, I don't even think it's copyright anymore, but it, it might be. You never know. But yeah, that's the Maple Leaf Rag. And, um... Oh, you're very, you're very welcome. I'm glad I could play that little bit for you. Like I said, maybe I'll practice it a little bit in one of the later streams. I'll play us out with it. The one thing I have to be careful of, though, is, is some of the classical music is copywritten, and then YouTube will get mad at me. <laughs> Because some company buys the rights to it, and then they, they get upset. But uh, I'll try to see what I can do. Yeah, uh, that fa playing the Maple Leaf Rag really fast is really difficult as well. Um, and, oh, what game did you find it in, by the way? Do you remember? Are you a gamer? Do you play video games? Because I talk about video games at least uh, once every stream <laughs> that we do. And then anybody else, if anybody else is here and they want to chip in, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, always remember, you know, if you feel like it, uh, you know, if you learn something from this video, 
you know, leave a like, let others know that they can learn from this video as well. And then, like I said, uh, if you're just joining us, you probably missed the main lesson portion, which was, you know, uh, when we first started. But uh, you will be able to watch the clip later on. And then, like I said, I think with YouTube, you can look back uh, right now and uh, see the earlier parts of the live stream. Tamagotchi 3. So is uh, that's like the little digital pets, if I believe, from uh, like the 90s. Uh, those were so much fun at the time. But at the same time, really uh, interesting because they would like wake me up in the middle of the night wanting to be fed and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know how I did that. But uh, those were something uh, for a while. Tamagotchi 3. Or, or is that on a, a game system? Um, I'm not sure about that. I do remember Tamagotchi, though. Yeah, Tom, uh, the copyright is getting out of hand. Uh, a lot of companies are just uh, flagging videos uh, left and right. Mine don't get flagged too often, but if I'm not careful, they will. Uh, I can guarantee it. Oh, okay, I got you. On Nintendo's, okay. Yeah, I know it came out for like a couple of systems as well. I think they might even had one for the DS. Uh, things like that. So any, uh, any questions around from anybody else? Uh, I love talking to new people. Love to see you. I'm going to just call you Yogo. Is that okay? Uh, because your name is really uh, like a tongue twister almost. <laughs> So I'm going to call you Yogo. If that's okay with you. If it's not okay with you, then I'll call you uh, something else. But it's great to have you, by the way. And again, uh, we have these streams uh, almost every Friday and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So around this time, 42 minutes ago from whatever time it is for you, uh, that's when we started. Okay, uh, all right, Yogo, thank you uh, so much for your comments and your questions. Hopefully, I can help your dad learn the piano. Like I said, if he has any questions or you want to ask me more questions, uh, facebook.com slash lessons on the web is a great way to get into contact with me. Just uh, like the lessons on the web page and then send me a message through there. Shesk does it a lot. <laughs> Not a lot, but like every few days, I think, or maybe uh, like once a week, but... He sent me some really cool uh, digital, what was it, the Spectrum? Was that the ZX Spectrum? Or that, No, that was the Atari ST, wasn't it? The uh, chipset from that. Um, and, and some like uh, digital tunes from that that were really impressive. Oh, Amiga. Okay, that's what it was. That's what it was. I, got, I said the, like, the two other ones. I was listening to those maybe uh, another week ago ago or so, and uh, it was really, really impressive. Soundtrack on Amiga, okay. Uh, which piece is coming up next Friday? Uh, what piece do you want me to play? Um, I can play almost anything. I guess. Oh, well, let's keep it simple, because I think a lot of us here are like kind of beginners. I don't think a lot of us are super advanced yet. Um, I want to uh, keep it a little bit simpler. So that Bach uh, one I did before, uh, which I think was great for some people. I think they really like that. Uh, but I want to keep the channel about the you know the easier stuff for the beginners. But um, and then I want to keep like the stuff on my website for like the really in depth, uh, advanced stuff. If you're really like serious about getting good. Or, you know, or if you just want to be a part of it. And it really helps me out a lot as well and helps support lessons on the web. But you don't have to. Like I said, just being here uh, whenever you can, watching a video now and again and giving, you know, a thumbs up and all that stuff uh, is more than enough. So. so we have some more people now. If you know, if you're wondering who these people are on the screen, I accidentally started to play the video again. I turned the sound down, though. Uh, this is Scott Joplin. We were listening to Maple Leaf Rag a minute ago. And today we talked about quarter note triplets. So uh, if you're interested in that, 
uh, check out a uh, upcoming clip uh, or an upcoming recording of the live stream uh, to check that out. Uh, excuse me. The American Anthem? I can do that. Um, yeah. That would, you know, you know what would be, that would be good for, though, uh, the 4th of July. Uh, or July, like sometime in July. I'm not sure whether we'll have uh, a live stream on the 4th of July or not. Uh, I could probably tell you, though. Whoops. We are in 2016. The year of the apocalypse. I mean, the presidential election. All right, so we have um, coming into July. So the 4th is a Monday, so we'll just miss it. So maybe on the 3rd we'll do the, the anthem. But your other suggestion about um, the standard learner pieces uh, is a good one. So start now. Okay, maybe I will. Maybe I will. That's a good point. That's a good point. Okay, we'll do that. The national anthem. Uh, let's. Sh can you, uh, sh Yogo asks, can you w wiggle the fingers on one hand and flash the finger on the other? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that question, uh, but it seems like you're trying to give a tip. I made it up because I thought it would help in controlling hands better. Um, it might. I'm not sure exactly uh, what... If you could phrase it another way, maybe I'll uh, grasp it, but... Um, if you don't have a piano, James, uh, who is new, I believe, James Rogers, uh, says, uh, hey, I'm really eager to learn piano, and I'm trying to teach myself, uh, how to play it using YouTube and other online sources, which is good. Uh, do you recommend I buy a piano and practice or get lessons first? I recommend... That you get a piano first. So if you if you have a keyboard or something already, then you can probably start with the lessons right away. But if you uh, need to buy a keyboard or piano, I would get one of those or get access to one of those. So if you you know you have a neighbor that's willing to let you practice over there, I'm not sure how uh, you know tight you are with your neighbors, or you know churches have pianos and things like that. Uh, you can use them there, but you really need one to practice on on a regular basis. So I really recommend that you get one uh, for your home so you can either buy a piano or a keyboard. I have a couple of videos on the channel about uh, buying a keyboard if you want to check those out. Scroll through and find those. Those were from a while ago. I think those were from like March or so, the live stream uh, videos on that. Um, but I recommend you get one of those, and then uh, you can continue watching the YouTube videos, like, you know, if you want to watch my videos or Lightbird's videos or, you know, whoever else is out there, uh, it's totally fine with me. And if you're really, like, serious about it and you want, you know, like, um, to learn a lot, I really recommend my website, uh, LessonsOnTheWeb.com. There I have an online academy. It does cost a little bit of money, but uh, it has a lot more stuff on it. Uh, then I offer on the YouTube, and also you can send your like recordings to me, or I will meet you over Skype, and uh, we can go over your playing together and get some feedback there. But I do recommend you absolutely have a piano first, and then whichever way you want to go, like and learn the material is totally up to you. Uh, but if you want to ask me questions about it later uh, as well, once you get a piano, I'd be more than happy to help you out. So again, uh, Facebook.com/slash Lessons on the Web. If you want to like the page there, and then you can message me. Uh, like I say, Shesk does it, who's also in the uh, chat here. Uh, he does it quite a lot, so I try to get back to those uh, as soon as I can.
Okay, back to Yogo. Thank you, Shesk. Uh, I love it. Thank you for getting that link for me. Uh, let's see. Like, you're playing the piano... Uh, fingers in it. Okay. Like, you're playing the piano with one hand really fast and flick all fingers on the other hand repeatedly. You're playing the piano with one hand really fast. And flick all fingers on the other hand repeatedly. Like, like that? I'm not sure if I t entirely get it. Um... Okay, great, great, James. Uh, and then, if you always want, to, if you ever want to attend the stream again, uh, you're always welcome to. Uh, as I've said uh, a bunch of times, Friday and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when we usually meet. So if you meet here, um, you know, 51 minutes ago from whatever time it is right now for you, uh, that's when we start. And you're always welcome to come back if you want some more, uh, you know, free advice uh, to kind of see where things are going. But I wish you the best of luck. Uh, on learning piano and getting a great keyboard. Okay, let's see. So, yo go with the question. Um, not sure entirely what you mean, uh, but I'm going to say that I want you to know about, um, you know, something called Hannon exercises. I actually did make another video about this. Um, so if you go to hannon-online.com, and uh, there's a lot of free exercises on here. You know, there's uh, piano exercise number one through number 20. There's actually more than that. But you say you click on number one, and you go down here, and you can download the uh, PDF and then, you know, view the exercise that way. So then you open up the PDF, and then you make it, you know, nice and big so you can see what's going on. through the exercises you might have to go pretty slow at first uh you will get a lot better at piano uh, i got a lot better when i play through all these as well and then check back through the channel i do have one like all about piano exercises and things like that in the air flick like you're shooting fireballs or something <laughs> okay like Like that? You know, that might be an interesting, like, coordination technique, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, or maybe, like... Like that? Um, if that's what you're talking about, like I said, that might be an interesting, like, coordination practice, because you're doing one thing with one hand and one thing with another hand. Uh, that, that might, like... That might work. That's not something I teach, but uh, I can't see it, like how it could hurt you in any way um, doing that. Fireball, thunderbolt, thunderbolt. If you ever seen the the, the kids LARPing outside uh, when they're like dressing up as uh, Dungeons and Dragons and like going thunderbolt, thunderbolt, fireball, or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't stop you from doing it. It's not something that, uh, like I said, I'm not something I teach officially, but uh, it might be an interesting uh, coordination technique. And then, you know, like as Shesk has posted for me already, uh, you can check out, you know, those little exercises. Those uh, help uh, quite a lot. Hi, cool, says Mason. Hello, cool. How are you? I assume you're saying hi, and that something is cool. But great to have you, Mason. Uh, you know, I love to see new people, and especially uh, new people uh, commenting. So how are you, and how is your piano playing going? Well, 
Whoa, somebody else has come in. Diamond Miner Gaming, 17 Gaming, is here. I assume you are uh, a Minecraft um, person. Because those are the Diamond Miners I know about. And the gamers, of course. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, you know, I wish I was at a period in my life where I had more time. Well, well not, you know, wish, wish, but like, you know, I would like to be in a part of my life where uh, I could play more uh, Minecraft. I played it a few years ago, but that was already in a time, like I just finished college and I started to get more and more busy. If I had found it during college, that would have been amazing, but it wasn't out yet. It didn't come out until I was like almost done in 2010. Uh, I think that was when the beta was out. Oh, good, good. So, yeah, if there's any other questions you have for me, um, you know, the Diamond Miner, I would love to uh, hear them. And uh, I'd love to answer them uh, for you. So, uh, And if you ever feel like checking back to the live stream, you can always uh, feel free to do that. And I'd love to uh, have you back again. What kind of music do you like to play? Uh, classical, rock, uh, pop, you know, video game music. I know when I, you know, I love playing video game music as well. Some of my favorite music is from the Mega Man series. If you're an old school gamer, uh, that's some of the best music by far, I think. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yogo said, what's? Oh, you like playing all kinds of music. Yeah, I do too. You know, everybody asks me what my favorite is. And I'm mostly clean, trained in classical, but uh, I do love uh, all types of music as well. Tim, did you ever sort out how to play that piece from two weeks ago, Fugue, where the span was too large for your hand? You either had to drop a note or cheat and use the other hand to step over. Uh, using the other hand to step over actually was the solution. I just didn't. Uh, I didn't want to do it during the lesson because it would have made the video way longer because it takes a lot of time to figure that out. But generally, like, I, I remember what you're talking about where you had, like, a, a couple of notes on the bottom and then you had some notes up here and then, like, some left-hand notes drawn all the way up here. Well, I would play those with all with my right hand even though they're designated with the left hand. They're really for people with, like, impossibly big hands. And then uh, if I absolutely couldn't get it, I would have to drop out one of the notes. There's some music theory behind that as to which note you drop out to get it to sound right. But that, that is the solution is picking it up with one of the other hands or uh, dropping it out. Rich is here. He made it by the, end, the very end. Uh, great to have you. Uh, we will be concluding in a few minutes, but uh, it's great to have you again. And like I said, uh, the recording will be posted later. Uh, we did quarter note triplets today and how to count those. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've played those a lot. I have uh, practiced those many, many times. Rich missed quarter note triplets. I think that was uh, something you suggested, right, that we do, and I uh, I just remember somebody suggested it, and I wanted to uh, get it for today. But like I said, the clip will be coming out, or the recording, and then there will be a clip of just that, you know, where I cut out all the fluffy stuff, uh, and it's very, uh, you know, condensed. So how are you doing, Rich? By the way, anybody just listening, if you want to give this video a thumbs up and let others know that this is a lesson they can learn from, that would be fantastic. If you don't want to, I guess, you know, that's okay. I would be fine with that. <laughs> it's okay, Rich. Like I said, you can check out the uh, the recording later. 
Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the lesson, it is harder than counting eighth note triplets, and the key is to go over it again and again and again. You'll see what I mean uh, when you watch the video. Thank you, Shesk. Thank you. Oh, good, good. So Rich has been practicing uh, 16th note rhythms, which we went over um, a while ago during the live stream. So uh, that's why it's always good to attend these. You always get like little uh, bits of information. And then I also do have a playlist for rhythm like uh, Shesk and I have me mentioned uh, before. That's all right, Diamond Miner Gamer. Um, you know, if you want to, like I said, well, you subscribed, right? So you'll probably get a notice from YouTube uh, when we're streaming next. And like I mentioned before, um, basically whatever an hour ago was from now, what, I'm not sure what time zone you live in, but uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so an hour ago from now, uh, on Fridays and Sundays, most Fridays and Sundays, we hold these live streams. So you're always welcome back. And I would love to uh, have you uh, for the stream and, you know, take your questions and communicate with you. So you're always welcome back. Everybody's always welcome back. Yogo is welcome back. And uh, everybody else who has uh, shared with us today. Yogo says, are you ever too old to play? I love this question. No, I don't think you are. I taught an 80-year-old. She knew a little bit already. But I taught her, and she did really well. So that proves really you can't be too old to learn piano. She picked it up just fine. Now, she said she didn't do well, but I thought she did uh, very – I think she's a little self-conscious, but uh, I think she did really well, um, especially for being 80, but really for anybody. Um, and then the, you, the age I recommend you start at – I mean, you can start really, really young, like at 5, uh, but I recommend one of my students start at 6 years old. You're probably, uh, uh, chances are you're older than six uh, by, by a bit. Um, so no matter what age you are, I think learning the piano is something you absolutely can do. Uh, the 80-year-old got to playing. Um, so if you know, I don't know if you know the John Thompson uh, piano series. She got through like a lot of that. She could play, uh, we, you know, she could play for Elise. She could play uh, like Ode to Joy, basic uh, Beethoven stuff, but Beethoven stuff. She was at that point to where she could play from like classical artists. You know, she wasn't a concert level pianist by any stretch, but and she knew her scales and she knew how to sight read and she knew about music theory and rhythm and stuff so she got fairly far uh i only taught her for a while because she did uh unfortunately go blind she didn't pass away as far as i know uh, but uh i think she was losing her sight and her eye so uh she had to discontinue the lesson i was really sad i really like teaching her All right, everybody, I think I'm going to call it a day here uh, in a second um, or a minute. So I thank everybody for coming out to attend uh, this evening. We will, uh, there is one plan for next Friday at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time again, and uh, we'll meet there again. So I want to say one last time, you know, uh, you can communicate with me on Facebook or, um, you know, well, it's probably the best way to communicate with me. Or Tim at LessonsOnTheWeb.com uh, is also great. And remember to subscribe for more great videos and so you know when all this stuff is uh, taking place. So anyway, this has been Tim from Lessons on the Web. Thank you all so much uh, once again for coming out. I hope you found it enriching and I hope you all uh, learned something because that's what it's really all about. It's really helping people learn the piano who might not have you know, had the opportunity to otherwise. And I always appreciate uh, going towards that goal. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a great weekend. Rest of the weekend, the last couple hours that are left. And I'll talk to you uh, at the next lesson. So thank you.
You're welcome, Yogo. I'm really glad uh, I could, uh, you know, host the uh, stream for all of us, and I'm glad you could make it out. And then Rich asked really quick, how have I ever had trouble with clients, like non-payment stuff? I only give the lesson after they pay me. <laughs> That's how it works. But yes, that is a problem a lot of piano teachers have, but I don't because I just have that policy. I don't give lessons in advance. I let people pay me in advance, but I always come through because, you know, I'm the teacher, uh, you know, and it's my best interest to come through uh, all the time. So uh, that's the uh, answer for you. But you're all welcome, and uh, I'd love to see you out again, and uh, have a great week. Thank you.